Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? This is Heidi St. John. Welcome to Off the Bench. Today is Monday. And as I told you guys on Friday, I was going to continue a series that I'm going to be doing for you guys here at the show called Hot Monogamy. But we had an awesome opportunity to interview Mark and Amber Archer. Mark and Amber are the producers of a brand new documentary about what's happening in our public school system called The Mind Polluters. They actually got to come to the Homeschool Resource Center and premiere that movie for families here. And I asked if they would join me in studio to talk about why they decided to make this very important film. So today and tomorrow, I'm going to air my interview with Mark and Amber Archer. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Hey, everybody, this is Heidi St. John. I'm glad you guys have joined me. This is Off the Bench. For those of you who are brand new to the podcast, you guys can find me now on YouTube and on Rumble. Today, I'm very excited to have Mark and Amber Archer actually in the studio with me. They are the producers of a brand new documentary out called The Mind Polluters. We're going to spend some time today talking about why this topic is so important. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys, so I'm glad that you joined me. For those of you who are brand new to the study at MomStrong International, I want to encourage you, now is a great time to jump in. We are studying discernment. The Bible says that we are to test all things. And so uh, this is a great time of year to be doing it because your kids are getting out of school. And by the way, homeschool mom, if you're not done homeschooling right now, you're just being a masochist, okay? Just be done. Just be done. It's okay to be done. Make some cookies, go outside, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy your kids. And don't forget to make it a practice. It's a great opportunity in the summertime of studying the word with your kids. That's why we founded MomStrong International. All right, I'm excited today to have some friends in the studio. Mark and Amber Archer are here. I first met uh, met them when I heard about their new uh, movie, The Mind Polluters. And actually, you guys are in Vancouver, Washington right now because we're going to premiere it at the Homeschool Resource Center. So welcome. Yeah, we are excited. Thanks for having us. It's fun. It's kind of weird to see you in person because last (laughs) time I saw you was on a screen. (laughs) In our kitchen. In your kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot lot going on. You guys are on a mission. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of uh, people talking right now about this new documentary about the Mind Polluters. I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, Most of the time, you know, people listen to my show and have for you know, uh, I'm coming up on eight years now of doing this show, know that I don't like to pull punches or mince words. I frankly think the culture is on fire and we don't have time to mince words. So I'm not going to dance around this. How come you decided? I mean, there's a lot of things you can make a documentary about. Mm -hmm. Why would you decide to jump into the indoctrination and the garbage that's coming into the hearts and minds of our kids via the public school system? Yeah, I can start with my end of the story. You know, I grew up in a church and uh, went to a good Christian school, good church, good good Christian home. And then when I got out of school, I just I just I didn't fall off the wagon. I I jumped off the wagon. You jumped off the wagon. And I just lived most of my twenties and early thirties just very hedonistic lifestyle. And a big part of that was becoming really addicted to pornography. Mm-hmm. And so as a young man and and working in in the the entertainment field, making movies, it's just all around. It you. lends itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, I just uh, it was to the point where I found myself more times than not, if I was going out drinking, mm-hmm. which I did a lot, mm-hmm. I ended up at a strip club. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> men who spend a lot of time at strip clubs, they don't. They don't want to acknowledge that they're actually porn addicts. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of a more obvious form of porn addiction than sitting there and watching women take their clothes off. Right, right. And paying them to do it. That's the nature of it. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and it wasn't until years later after we met and... uh, Dun-da-da, fun (laughs) fact for you. Um, We met in the strip club that I was dancing at. Get out of town. I miss this in our first interview. (laughs) This is so exciting. We didn't didn't talk about this. I told you, this might might take a while. Yeah, yeah, it's great, though. I mean, I love a story of redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a redemption story. Hallelujah. It was, yeah. I love it. So, yeah, I was... um, I was a divorcee. I had gotten into a, a... very bad marriage and it didn't last very long at all and so I was right back to my old ways Mm -hmm. and I'm out drinking and and living the life 
Um, and you guys, are in, you're in your 20s at this time. I was in my early 30s okay. at this point. Yeah, okay. but then I went out one night by myself for my birthday and ended up in a strip club. Mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. And that's, and that's where, where I met her. <laughs> happy Amber. birthday, right? Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> right? And, and birthday, men, Mr. Men, President. Yeah, men, don't want to, <laughs> men don't want to admit to this kind of stuff. Right? Yeah. And it was always, for a long time after we were together, it was, well, where did you meet? Uh, we met at a bar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we met at a gym. <laughs> you know? We met at a gym. We don't want to talk about it because men are embarrassed. There was no, a I, pole. It was oh, a gym. I, it was I a fire station. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I hung out at places like that because yeah. I, I was that pathetic Yeah, because I was a porn addict. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we met. Yeah. And, uh, and I ignored wow. him for a while. Yeah. Did well, you? I, I did. I was like, weirdo? I never call with guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hated men. I really did. Like working in a place for five years, I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic and I worked in a strip club mm-hmm. and it was, you know, looking back on my life and I think about, <laughs> my goodness, the Lord was so kind and gracious and, you know, to pluck me out of yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, and once the Lord gets hold of you. Well, what's so cool about you guys, having not known this about you, the, the Holy Spirit is so all over you <laughs> and just all over your family. It just radiates off of you. And I love that, especially now, because you know <laughs> mm-hmm. that, you know, I think sometimes, you know, people grow up in Christian homes or whatever, and they sort of take their Christianity for granted and it just sort of, eh. But when people get radically saved— mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Because you see the difference, the stark difference between walking in the light and walking in the darkness. Now, I got to ask you, Mm -hmm. how did you end up in a strip club? Uh, well, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, mm-hmm. and I have a twin, mm-hmm. and we— An identical twin? Uh, fraternal. We're fraternal okay. twins. Okay. Pretty and, close to identical. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. And, Pretty close. And so we were desperate to get out of the uh, living environment, if you will, of being at home. Mm-hmm. And we were young, you know, we were 20 years old, and— She was working as a medical receptionist at a hospital. I was a uh, manager, an office manager of a plumbing company at this time. But we were just so desperate to get out in a way. And someone had told my sister about, hey, you know, there's a great way you can make money. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so so we went and we visited Mm -hmm. the clubs around town. You know, she came and picked me up and she's like, hey, you know, I think we can make money on the side. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, so it started off as a, as a weekend kind of gig, mm-hmm. but soon realized, we're like, why are we working 40 hours a week? Right, right. And we're making more money in two days than we are. All. Yeah. So it was very, you know, it is money is, is very alluring at, at this point. It, it was a 20-year-old. 20, 20 mm-hmm. Um she didn't stay long in the business, but I kept on because she had um, a, a young child, a son, mm-hmm. and I stayed and it consumed me. Mm-hmm. I ended up doing every kind of drug under the sun mm-hmm. and raging alcoholic, mm-hmm. in and out of jail, house arrest, community mm-hmm. service. I mean, you mm-hmm. name it. I was, mm-hmm. I was that person. Your life was falling apart. Yeah. yeah. Spiral, mm-hmm. out of control. Yeah. I think it's interesting, too. Uh, and we've had, um, my husband and I have had the, uh, just an amazing opportunity over the years to interview awesome people that have come from similar backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And I came from a, of an abusive home too. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, you know, the allure of just kind of getting out and people like these, these young kids, they're looking for something else. Yeah. And they'll literally go almost anywhere to get out yeah, of the, you're desperate. Out, yes, you're desperate to mm-hmm. go, to get out of the um, environment they're in. But I think it's interesting. And I want to sort of capitalize on something that you said, because we had several guys uh, on the show talking about porn addiction. We've done this over the years. And I think it's always interesting to talk to the women who will say, I hated men. Mm-hmm. So here you're in a strip club. People think, you know, that the presumption is that, um, you know, the women like this and we know, we just, but it, actually it's not true at all, is no. it? No, and a lot, and most of the time, a lot of the women are, um, they've been l- abused. They've been, ab- uh, yes, certainly abused, but they are not in a man and woman relationship. Mm-hmm. They are usually in a homosexual, gay, mm-hmm. lesbian relationship. They don't, and it's, it's all this, Oh, it's it's just a wicked web mm-hmm. uh, of lies and deceit mm-hmm. within the walls of those organizations and, and yeah. establishments. Yeah, amazing. Mm-hmm. So you you went to this club and you meet Amber, mm-hmm. and it took you how long to to say, hey, maybe we maybe I'll go out with this guy. We well, it was before it was before really 
cell phones because we were emailing each other. Was there life other. before cell phones? I don't even remember. <laughs> was there life before cell phones? No one knows. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely before smartphones, but, uh, you know, he... It was g- about a month. There was a better <laughs> life before cell phones. Let's be honest. Yeah. Life was better. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It took you a while to text somebody. Right, right, right. You have to do the... Scroll you have to, through yeah, these exactly. three letters. That's the one I want. Oh, wait, I made a mistake. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we emailed back and forth, you know, before he left, and then he tried to come and pick me up to go out on a date, and I'm like... Out you, whatever. She blew me off. She blew times. you off. Yeah. <laughs> I was relentless. I, I was relentless slash pathetic, right? So I was just, I, I was, I was just a pathetic man, and and uh, yeah. But she finally and agreed finally, to meet me one night. Finally, one night. It was it was one night. I, was, I got enough work. And I thought, I'm going to call, I'm going to email him. So I did. And there was like this immediate response. <laughs> I was laying in he bed. He was waiting, I, waiting for your email. I heard my is. email in the, in the den. I went, ding. And I go, oh, who is it? Da, 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 da. <laughs> and it was her. <laughs> yes. Yes. Score. <laughs> yeah. So we just, we just started um, talking and really, it was the first time that I'd actually wanted to get to know somebody because when he mm. left, and I think just the, the pursuit it was radically different from any man that I had ever encountered. Mm-hmm. And I thought, what is it about this guy? I mean, just yeah. what is yeah, it? Yeah, the pursuit. I love and, that. Yeah. And so, you know, and it really is, it, it really comes back to knowing the Lord. Mm-hmm. He he was just different. and Not that I was living for the no. Lord. No. Mm-hmm. But I had been, I had come to the Lord when I was about six. Mm-hmm. And so... I was, you know, a Christian who was running from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And she was someone that the Lord was drawing mm. to himself. And so, yeah, when we, then when we got together and, I don't know, we were together a few months mm-hmm. and then... Um, <laughs> got engaged. <laughs> got engaged. Right? Like three months because later. Again, <laughs> because I was, again. I was exceptional at bad decisions, and that made a lot of sense. Right? It made a lot of sense to me. Hey, I should ask this girl to marry me. Because right? I did so well with my other relationships. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. 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 So then you get, you get engaged, and mm-hmm. at what point... Um, <laughs> At what point did you did you come back to the Lord? At what point did did God get a hold of you? Well, it was it was interesting because um, really, how, I'm wondering how your marriage went without <laughs> the Lord. Like, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it, 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 it is so fascinating because we people always ask us all the time, and we're like, I think I can I can name on one hand how many times that we have argued with each other. Yeah, honestly, yeah, like mm-hmm. not ever, hardly ever. <laughs> um, so I love that, but. <laughs> Well, because it's it's the Lord. We start we start every morning in Scripture and reading, and, and it's and it's. I would say it's almost always been like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was leaving work as as a dancer, and um, there was a yard sign for a church at a movie theater, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna go. You know, the the club that I worked at got out at 5 a.m. So here I am on my way home, and I thought, I'm gonna. I got enough time. I can clean myself up, and I, I'm gonna go to church. Mm-hmm. And my sister and I would frequently go and find random churches and just go and sit. And, mm-hmm. and without fail, every time, it's like, oh, I think he's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's like if you look at like I'm gonna burn on the way out. Oh, or no. so, so, so you know, but this, but this time I just thought I'm gonna go to church. And sure enough, I went to this church at, at a movie theater. And I would sit way at the top and I would just listen. And one day the greeter, this woman who I saw and she knew my, she would, Hey Amber, how's it going? And, um, she asked me to go to lunch with them and it was her and the pastor and all other people within their circle. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) And I went and I will never forget going to, and I, you know, instant fear and panic thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to ask me what I do. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to ask me yeah. what I've done, where, yeah. you know, and what am I going to say to these people? The interesting thing is none of that happened. Mm. And they genuinely just cared and it, could see that I was obviously lonely. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I, I look now as, you know, an older adult and I look at everybody like, oh, let me take you under my wing. Come, <laughs> come to lunch with me. Because I know. You know how it feels. I know how it feels. Yeah. I know how much love was presented there. With They don't, they didn't even know it. Mm-hmm. But I remember I left that lunch and I went home and I just cried out to the Lord and asked mm-hmm. him, please, Lord, I, I need, I need help. Mm-hmm. You know, please forgive me for all I'd have done. And I just, and I begged and I pleaded. I'm like, 
I need someone to walk with me. How do I do this? And I met Mark three months later. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then, uh, we, so we were, we were together and, um, and then there was kind of a, another round of that, of her not being quite sure. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we found ourselves, she wanted to go to church. Mm-hmm. I because had not been to church in years. <laughs> yeah. I had no interest in being Yeah, you're up. like, I grew up I, in there. I, I don't want to go. I grew up in there. I know those people. I don't want to go I back. know those people. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and so, but we ended up going to church, and then we ended up in my parents' Sunday school class, so all these older adult Christians. Mm-hmm. And, kind of mentoring. and Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Stayed there for 16 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Never left there. Mm-hmm. And that wow. night we ended up going back home. First we went to my mom and dad's and she had a lot of questions. Well, because we, I, we were sitting under, because I told him when, when we started dating, I'm like, I have to go to church. Yeah. Like I, I just ex- had this awesome experience with these people and I'm like, I need to go to church. Like mm-hmm. that's, I felt comfortable there. I just really was so drawn. I was hungry for the word. I mean, mm-hmm. I was like a sponge, like give it all mm-hmm. to me. That's awesome. I, I felt so... I felt like I was behind. Yeah. You know, here I am, 25, and yeah. I think, I don't know anything, but I want to know. and <laughs> Give it all to me. That's okay. awesome. And so we um, we went, and I remember uh, Neil Clay, the deacon, the deacon of the class and, and church, and he said, if there's anyone here who knows you not as Lord and Savior, I pray that they come to you before it's eternally too late. Mm. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, I don't think I heard anything. That, that his dad was talking about like, for Sunday me. school. That's I'm like, me. what is this eternally too late mean? What what does he mean? How can I know for sure? And so that was my like, my question again. You know, here I am learning all of these things, and every time something would come up, I've got questions. I need answers. Yeah. <laughs> like, how does yeah. this all work? And so we went over to his mom and dad's, and they they walked me through everything, and they're like, do you want to pray? I was like, no, you know, still really shy, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, oh, no. But we went back at home, and we, we prayed and just laid it all out, like, wow. Lord, wow. Here I am. Wow. And so the answer to the question of how did that then, when did the Lord start working on me? It was that moment. Mm, wow. It was her, you know, because being there with her and then it was literally when we opened our eyes and I could, it was like this spotlight on me mm-hmm. and I almost felt hot mm-hmm. and I could just, I could just hear the Lord saying, all right, <laughs> now you. Yeah, yeah, you've done it your way. Yeah, now you're ready to do it my way. Yeah, because yeah. we were engaged, and mm-hmm. he said, "All right, I'm giving you a believing wife. Mm-hmm. Now you're now we're going to work on you, and you need to. Wow. We're going to the woodshed, Mark. Gives me goosebumps. And it was <laughs> and it was a hard thing. It was a it yeah. was a difficult time. I ended up quitting everything. I ended up quitting making films mm-hmm. um, because I had just, I, I had so much baggage. I had so much Mark mm-hmm. and I had to, I had to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And so I quit making films for three and a half years. And now when uh, you say making films, mm-hmm. what kinds of films were we making? I mean, was this like major Hollywood productions or what were you doing? <laughs> Yeah, so no, I never did. I never did porn or anything like mm-hmm. that. No. <laughs> me, well, yeah, I remember you, you did tell me some of the films, and I that and I think it's pretty cool yeah. what what you were able to do. It's yeah. kind of so when I so and it's it's strange too because people uh, people still they don't quite understand. And this was back in the nineties, right? Mm-hmm. So I grew up um, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and. This Which is everyone when, knows is where all the good movies come right, from. Right, it's the Hollywood of the Midwest. <laughs> Everybody knows. This. Everyone knows. And uh, um, so I made my first feature-length film at the age of 22. Wow! I produced a film with a guy named Neil Labute. It was called In the Company of Men. And um, Aaron Eckhart. It was his first feature-length film. That so man. he's he plays wow. Harvey Dent, oh, yeah. right? And in okay. The Dark Knight. So it was his first film. We made. We all made our first movie together. Wow. In Fort Wayne, Indiana, summer of 1996. We made the whole film in 11 days for $25,000. Right? <laughs> That's pretty good. And we had this ragtag crew. I mean, it was like the Rebel Alliance, right? It was yeah, just yeah. a whole bunch of, you know, indie, we're going to do yeah, this, we're doing it. storm the gates. Yeah, yeah. And we got it done, and then we sent it off to the Sundance Film Festival, and then we sat and we waited. And then in the meantime, we were all broke, right? Because right. we're all... Did you spend all your money? We spent all our money and gave up all of our freelance work to, to get this film done. 
And the week of Thanksgiving, we found out that we had been accepted into the Sundance, Sundance. Film Festival. Wow. And it, it was even more then than it is now, but it was the equivalent of being nominated for an Oscar for an indie film. To get it, to even get into Sundance Amazing. was like, but there was only 16 films that were accepted. Wow. And so we found out that we had gotten in, and then we had all this work to do to finish it because we were still shooting film. You had to take a print with you to Sundance. So we had to go raise another $100,000. <laughs> Listen, as a girl who's in the middle of a congressional run right now, I can tell you raising money is not my favorite thing to do. It's not. This is so exciting. I got to take a quick commercial break. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. So you have, so your film gets accepted mm. to Sundance. Sundance yeah. And then what? So then we went to Sundance and we won the filmmaker's trophy. There's three big trophies and we won the filmmaker's trophy. And then we sold the film to Sony Pictures. Wow. So Sony released it the fall of 97. And then suddenly, Mark's got a career, right? So yeah, you can yeah. do a lot more. I wouldn't say I could do anything. Yeah. Um, but that that was the beginning of, of my film career. And I got to do a lot of other cool stuff after that. Unfortunately, I was interested only in what Mark wanted to do. So... Mm -hmm. When I was a teenager and I was, you know, working in television production at church, and I remember telling the Lord, I want to make movies for you and, you know, do this, make a difference in the world for, for you know, for the gospel. And then I promptly abandoned all that. As right. soon as I got a taste of Hollywood. And the world, yeah. Yeah, then mm -hmm. I just ran for it. And um, you just find yourself surrounded with all of these bad influences, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you remember David Carradine. Yes. Uh, yeah, so the Kung yeah. Fu guy. So I got yeah. to direct I him. liked him. I mean, I didn't, didn't know, but I liked to watch him. You didn't have to work with him. That's why oh, see, that's him. why I liked him. Yeah. <laughs> so right after that, I, I directed a film with him and Mariel Hemingway. And um, and the reason I bring that up is because the, the influence that people like that have on you, right? So. Yeah. He's this huge name, Mariel Hemingway. I had I had more respect for Mariel than for him. She was mm -hmm. a lot nicer to me. Mm -hmm. And but because I believed all of my own malarkey and everything that everybody was saying about me, you know, oh, he, you're going to be the next big thing, and mm -hmm. we're you know we're going to work with you on all this. And so I started to believe it all. Mm -hmm. And then you start letting people like David Carradine influence you heavily and so I just became a, a narcissist yeah you know just a jerk yeah because it was all about Mark and in the meantime you know I, I, I couldn't make a good decision about any kind of relationship because it was just all about what what can Mark get out of it mm -hmm. and that film was called American Real that film colossally failed I mean total flop mm. so go from one that nobody expected to do anything went like yeah, this. Yeah, so the expectations were really high the for the next one. The expectations were yeah. impossible. Yeah, yeah. And then I was ready for my big directorial debut, and it went nowhere. Mm -hmm. And so I just spun out of control for years, and I was bitter. Mm -hmm. I was mad at God. It was all his fault, mm -hmm. right? And so fast-forwarding then to she and I being together, and I had just gotten burned out from trying to make Mark into some kind of icon. Right. And so I walked away from all of it wow. for three and a half years. Wow. Sold everything. <laughs> Sold everything, closed all. So we were doing a lot of corporate work, mm -hmm. you know. And for, for guys, if you've done movies, going back to doing corporate is like... Mm -hmm. Boring. Know, boring. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you feel like you failed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just hated everything about it. Mm. But it was in those years of... So I went back to school... Uh, so we had our first daughter, uh, our, uh, we had our youngest, and then our, our second daughter was born during this time period. And I'm trying to go back to school and change careers. So mm -hmm. I'm finishing my engineering degree. Oh, wow. Okay. And got done with that, and I couldn't find a job to save my life because I didn't have any relevant experience. People look at my resume and go, um, <laughs> you're overqualified. What yeah, is yeah, this yeah. part where you went to Sundance? What is that? <laughs> I need a guy who can program 
CNC machines. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. right. So not you. This? Yeah. Yeah. And so we were, uh, we were talking about it, and we were, I mean, we were just running out of time, running out of money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was doing portrait photography mm-hmm. and kind of brought me back into doing video work for her business. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, I really need some advertising. Do you know anybody <laughs> that can do a video for me? Yeah. And I hadn't touched a camera in three and a half years. I just did. I had no interest. And all this time, so you guys have two kids. Mm-hmm. And you're Babies, continuing just yeah. to grow in the Lord. And the Lord's yes. kind of, you know, you're, t- you're walking through some deep water, it mm-hmm. sounds like, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a, that is a, a firm dose of humble pie yeah. when you go from, you know, Mr. Sundance to college freshman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the first time I went to college, I flunked out because I didn't go to class. Right. Oh, so I yeah. had to go back and take all these remedial math classes because <laughs> Mark's so smart. It took him, you know. That's such a bummer. <laughs> that is. It's such a bummer. <laughs> right. And the, and the Lord's using it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm sitting there with all these, you know, 18, 19 year olds and I'm in my 30s. I've got yeah. children and a wife. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to start over. And I mean, it was, and I look back now and I see that was the Lord working on you going, I want you to, I'm purging you of Mm -hmm. yourself. Yourself. Yeah. And so you fast forward to, she's now got me shooting videos Mm -hmm. again. And, um, which worked out great, by the way. Yeah, I bet. (laughs) And then we we were um, talking one morning about having a nonprofit. Filmmaking ministry. Yeah. Well, because we were we were we were getting calls to fix issues from other nonprofits yeah. that where they had video done, and the thing that was always glaring was the um, absence of Christ and yeah. and how people understand the gospel. And so we were getting calls from all these other nonprofits, and they're like, "Hey, we just had this video done. Can you guys?" Can you, come, can you guys come and fix this? Right. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> and so we were heavily discounting, knowing that they just spent tens of thousands of dollars. And the two to get of, a product that to, wasn't right. Right. Mm-hmm. To get something that wasn't right. We know we know how important those those image videos, if you will, how important they are in reaching people. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like the Lord laid it on our heart. Like, you guys, I've called you to this. Mm-hmm. Go and help these people. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, okay, <laughs> we're going, Lord. <laughs> and so we did, and um, it was. It, there was one morning we were up, so we get up super early in the morning. So being out here in Washington, it's been a little. Uh, we get up even earlier now because yes. you're three hours behind I us. I know. <laughs> you guys should have adjusted though. If you're driving, you sort of adjust. Here's the trick. So I fly like coast to coast all the time. So I go from you know Pacific time to Eastern time frequently. And you just have to, I sleep with my blinds open in hotel rooms and stuff, and you adjust your body clock with the sun. Well, we'll have to try. It really will help you. That's neat in theory. Do you remember those stories That's you told us theory. about Listen, driving? That's neat in theory. Listen, you just mocked me on my own show. I think I just got mocked. With children coasting. Do you remember uh, those yes, stories? Yes, I do remember, so yeah. We'll take yourself back to that. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I didn't fly with them. So flying is a little different. But yes, I understand. Yeah. We're cruising the great highways. Right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, road trip. You're out here in my neck. It's pretty out here, isn't it? Oh, it it's really beautiful. Is. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, we get up super early, and we always start our day with scripture. Yeah. And and we have because, you know, running a small business and the only the world comes at you as soon as yes. you turn on your computer. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. And then, and, then you're, and then you're done. You can't get back to the thing or, you want right. to do. And yeah. so so we get up super early, 3, 3.30 in the morning so that we can sit and read. Wow, you're not joking. Pray. You get up at 3.30 in the morning? Oh, yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah. Oh we goodness. used our, our YMCA <laughs> used to open at 3 o'clock and we would be there. And Shut there, up. there was a handful of people. What who, time do you go to bed at night? Well... Like hey, 30 six nine. o'clock? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I could go to bed at six, sometimes I would. Oh yeah. my goodness, three thirty in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Carry well, on. Look, because the world comes at you, and it so, really does. And especially when you have kids. Yeah. When do you have quiet time? No, I no. mean, so it, that's our commitment to the Lord. I and, love that. And you know, you have to stay grounded and You're always. Making me feel like a lazy. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of lazy right now. I'm like I got up at seven the other day, and I was feeling like, look at me, I'm up at seven. <laughs> These guys were like, we painted our house and you know wrote a new screenplay while you were sleeping. Okay. <laughs> wow. I didn't come here to make you feel bad. About I know. Well, too late. It's too late. <laughs> this is your Tony Robbins moment. That's right. Seize the day. Seize the day. <laughs> it's your Carpe Diem moment. Wow. Yeah. 
So that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So you guys are getting up you know, and, uh, and God's doing stuff in your life as you're growing with him. It sounds yeah. like. Yeah. And there was one morning we were, we were, we had got done studying scripture and we were praying and I remember just looking at him and I said, I think we're supposed to be doing movies. <laughs> and, and I went, <laughs> but not really. Cause he's like, you know, I've kind of had that same thought too. But I thought you have I was like, that's great. <laughs> I had been wrestling with that yeah. mm-hmm. for a while yeah. because I had, because God's had, gifted you. I, I wrote it off and I said yeah. I'm not going back. Yeah, except for except the summer. If, except if you tell me you want me to go back, then yeah. I would. But Lord, I don't know why you would ever tell me to do that. That would be crazy. <laughs> but only if you say so. Mm-hmm. And wow. that last summer of working my part time job while I was in school, and I was driving a delivery van, and I had this idea for what became Inwood Drive. Our first documentary film. Wow, and this I is about them. uncovering the abortion industry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm out, I'm out of time, but yeah. I, you were right. We were like, we're going to build it this in 20 minutes. No, we are not. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap it up. Would you guys be willing to come back tomorrow? Yeah. Because yeah. this is such a great story. Yeah. I know people are like, no, don't stop right now. Sorry, guys, we're going to have to pick it up again tomorrow. Um, it's just. A really, it's a privilege to have you guys here. I'm excited to see the response mm-hmm. that the Mind Polluters is getting. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to come back tomorrow and talk about Inwood Drive and the Mind Polluters and kind of where you guys are going next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's very exciting. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Where can people find you online? Uh, go to fearlessfeatures.org. Fearlessfeatures.org. All right, yeah. you guys, I will link back to that in the show notes. Thank you, everybody, for listening today. Mm-hmm. It's really fun to have you. For those of you who are brand new to uh, the podcast, we just started a video component of this, so you can find me at mm-hmm. YouTube when they're not deleting my videos off of YouTube, that is. And always at Rumble. So far, they've not deleted me off of there. Uh, but I hope you guys will check out the video component of this, and I uh, hope it's a blessing and an encouragement to you. Thanks for listening. I'll see you back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture. Mm-hmm.